Hi guys, my name is Excoundrel and I've been playing TFT since about the beginning of set 3. I very quickly got into this game and I used to play a game called Auto Chess so there were a lot of translatable skills. I went from silver to diamond in about 30 games. I placed in mid-silver and it took about 5 games to kind of understand the comps and understand how the economy worked. And then I basically played for a very consistent top 4 rate. I didn't get many wins but I was mostly looking to climb as much LP as possible using top 4. So I went from silver to diamond in about 30 games which is actually a pretty good going if you ask me um i'm now currently in diamond and i haven't been doing too well since the last patch but i do think there is a lot to talk about in terms of the skills and what i learned about tft when uh i was climbing from silver to diamond and how i can transfer some of that knowledge to you guys that may be struggling to climb so the first thing that I want to talk about is scouting. One of the most important things in any auto chess game, but actually is, is more important in, in TFT than any other auto chess game or auto battler game that I have ever played. So the first thing that I do when I'm scouting in the early game, when I'm talking about early game, I'm talking about anywhere from the end of the first neutral round to the end of the first round, so beginning 2-1, all the way up to the Krugs, is usually when I'm doing the majority of my scouting. I then scout a little bit later on with people that are competing for my build. But early game, I'm looking for items, components and combined items. Usually, the items that someone is hoarding or is picking up will give me an indication about what kind of builds they're going to go. Tears usually equal sorcerers. BF sword is flexible, but you're usually going to see some kind of infiltrator, Cyber build or Dark Star. Recurves is often usually Blade Master or Kale. Um, and Defense is quite adaptable, usually, I think, about Protectors or Bang Bros. There are a lot of items that are very adaptable, though, so don't base everything solely on the items that you see. Keep checking your opponent boards and benches all the way up to the first neutral round. By Krugs, you should be able to see the direction of most people's compositions and you can adjust your own if you need to. Key units that you should be looking out for are things like Ari, Zoe, and Poppy combos. Usually, if someone's got that in, in conjunction with Tears, they're going to be going for a Star Guardian Sorcerer composition. A stacked Zyre with Kale items, so things like Hand of Justice, Rage Blade, Rapid Fire, Static Shiv, usually a Kale composition. Brawler front lines with a stacked Lucian often can transition to Blaster Brawlers. Any combined infiltrators, so like Kaiser and Shaco, usually are going to lend themselves to either Dark Star or a Mech Infiltrator build. Any kind of mech units, because if you're building mech, you're usually going to go mech infiltrator as it's just the best composition to do it with. Other units that you want to be looking for is cybernetic units with an Irelia of, of Vi on the bench or fielded because cybernetic units are a good early game composition so not everybody will stick to cybernetics if they are picking cybernetics up in the early game but if they've got a Vi with an item on her or they've got a, an Irelia usually it means they're going to be going for cybernetics. Stacked Caitlyn with combined Ash and Darkstar units is usually a Jin Darkstar composition. Um, any combined Darkstar units like Maud, Shaco, Lux or Karma will give an indication that they're probably going for Darkstar. Uh, people feel Building early Zin and Rakan, especially if they're upgraded or keeping them on the bench, very likely protectors, and the same with Yasuo, Sona, and Yi for a potential Bang Bros. Those are, in my opinion, some of the most important ones to look out for, but obviously there are more, uh, and it will come with me, come with experience. When it comes to combining items, this is another important thing that I would like to talk about. So first of all, don't be afraid to combine items and slam them on your units in the early game. But you want to be looking at the components that you get and thinking about the best possible combinations that you can get, either with the components that you've already got from the neutral rounds or for potential further components that you can pick up from the carousels or further neutral rounds. Um, these items will often define your compositions, and I think in a lot of ways, items are more important than the units that you get for actually building a success successful uh, composition to get you to a top three finish or a top four finish even sometimes. Don't be afraid to slam certain items in the early game. Things like Guardian Angel, Rabadons, Seraph, Red Buff are quite universally applicable, so if you want to try and build a win streak with items, don't be afraid to throw them on a unit. And cybernetics are a really good early game composition to tra transition to. If you get a uh, Lucian, a Leona, and a Fiora, whack some random components on them, and you'll get a good buff from the cybernetic uh, synergy, but you won't actually need to combine any items or commit to a comp. Um, some builds are more dependent on items than other, and I feel like there are some builds that do better with the more perfect, in inverted commas, items. I think that you need really good items, i.e. items that work really well for the composition, to play Kale Carry. So you, you really need like recurve bow items as well as a GA, I think, to make Kale Carry w work. 
Protectors require really specific items, I feel, to be really good. Bang Bros require a, a similar specific items to do very good. Star Guardian Sorcerers definitely needs a Seraph and at least another tier item, preferably a Chalice, to do particularly well. But there are some uh, compositions that do um, work with a bit more flexibility. Dark Star builds, I think, because they have flexible carries. Cybernetics are quite flexible, although I would recommend at least an Infinity Edge on Irelia. Mech Infiltrator, because mechs are very, very good, very flexible. Vanguard Sniper, because I feel Jin items are flexible. And Brawler Blasters, because I think Jinx is fairly flexible as well. So those are, that's my advice on items. In terms of building a composition, this is something that a lot of people struggle with. So I'm going to talk about it in fairly um, detailed, I guess, de detailed depth. That doesn't really make any sense, but let's just run with it. Don't be a jack of all trades. Some comps require a lot of pr practice and understanding to really understand when their power spikes are. So I would choose three to four comps that are really good in the meta and practice them. You might watch a lot of streamers that were kind of memeing that they were mech infra infiltrator one tricks. That's not really um, unheard of to just play one composition and play it really well because that can allow you to climb more effectively than if you're trying to play a load of compositions that you don't actually understand how to play properly. Uh, don't try and be an innovator. There are lots of people that are like, I don't want to play meta, I want to play my own comps, and that's a really good way to throw your LP down the drain, if I'm completely honest with you. If you don't mind tanking LP, feel free to innovate, but I generally stick to what other people consider meta. Um, yes, of course, you can build your own meta compositions, but I feel like just the better way to climb is using the tried and tested. And understand when your comp needs to be strong, when you should be leveling, when you should be rolling, when do you need to look for a two-star four cost? Like, for instance, if you're playing Kale Carry, you need a two-star Kale to be really good. Um, if you're playing protectors you need to hyper roll or slow roll rather at level five and level six to find your units just understand when your composition needs to roll and when to level and what you're looking for to be strong you don't need to build your comp from round one it's really okay to build a good early game synergy and transition from there so i'm going to list some good early game synergies that in my opinion you can use to transition Three cybernetics with components on Lucian Fiora and Leona. You can you can obviously transition that into anything that you like, but obviously it can go to vanguards very easily. It can go to cybernetics very easily. It could even go to brawler blasters. Chrono TF is a very good early unit as is Blitz. So Chrono is a really really good two person synergy. Brawlers Blitz is again a very strong unit. Vanguards especially early harder to kill because there isn't a huge amount of magic damage um, and abilities aren't particularly strong in the early game. So especially if you give Jace some damage and you get four vanguards, really easy to carry yourself for the mid game with vanguards space pirates you get a load of extra um gold from them and blasters and ma well, you can combine it with blasters and mana reavers which are both very strong zaya with static shiv trust me it's insane three blade masters with yasu and yi and yi carrying some items three star guardians poppy ari and zoe are all very good uh, and then also protectors two star zin is actually quite strong you also need to then assess when you are competing for other builds that are contested. So this is something that a lot of people ask me. When should I give up contesting for a build? Should I contest builds that are already being contested? Um, and obviously this is a hard question to answer, so I've broken it up into several little questions that you should ask yourself. Do you have better items for your composition? Assess the items that you have and assess the items that your opponent has. If you have got better items, feel free to contest it because you might end up just winning due to the items that you have. What is their economy like? And this is especially important for slow roll comps like Bang Bros and Protectors, because if they're able to get to 50 gold before you, before you and start rolling that interest gold to find their units, you're already at a disadvantage. So make sure you're comparing your economy at all times with other people in the game. Be prepared to roll down before your competition. So for instance, roll your gold away to find units. It can be risky, but very rewarding. Does the comp need three stars to win? If you need three stars and someone's already found a lot of those units, consider pivoting. And what comps can you safely pivot to with your items and champions and that comes with experience with knowing which items are good for which compositions and which of your units that you can transition into another build effectively all right let's talk about positioning because this is another question that i always really get asked and i i, I again i'm not an expert i am still learning but this is the way i view positioning on a very basic level so the front units the front the front hexes the ones that i've highlighted in red this is these are your tank units these are melee units with the lowest attack range you want them to either soak damage or you want them to cast their ability quickly so i would put like nico on the front line chogath there but these are basically the areas for your tank units um things like shen as well go really well on that front line in the yellow and the yellow is usually the majority of the second hex these are units that have two attack range or units that you want to be in melee range but not take the initial aggro so i would put things like rakan here i'd put things like um thresh because he has a slightly longer attack range um but i'd also put people like irelia in a cyber in, in a cyber composition because i don't want her to take the initial aggro but i do want her to join the fight pretty quickly so these are this is an area for melee units that you don't want to die immediately or soak damage but you do want them to get into the fight 
as soon as possible. The blue area is units that you want to keep safe from things like blitz or infiltrators, but they do become more vulnerable to frontline carries. So I sometimes put Kale there, I sometimes put Jinx there. Um, this is just an area that you want to keep safe if you don't have things like Trap Claw or things like Quicksilver, and you want to have your um, carry in a safer position, but is a little bit more vulnerable to frontline carries. A little bit safer versus infiltrators and a little bit safer versus blitz. Cor corner units, a very safe area unless you're versus Blitz and you don't have a Quicksilver. The corner units are always likely to get pulled by Blitzcrank, but they're also areas where you're going to get the most area of effect with big abilities like Misfortune. So be, care be careful of putting units in the corner, make sure that you have the adequate guarding for them. The back line is units for the units that, with the long range, long ranges that you want to keep safe from Blitz, but they're also going to be more vulnerable to infiltrators. You can definitely use this area um, to place things like Jinx or any of your, you know, sort of your big long range carries like Kale. But you do have to be aware that if you're facing infiltrators, you should always be trying to outposition the infiltrators and not place your carry directly opposite or surround your carry with other units like in Star Guardian Sorcerers. You generally tend to fill the entire back line and put Syndra somewhere in the middle. And I, I've highlighted the flexible area because this is an area that isn't actually that often used but it is flexible for just putting like random blast units in for instance or any units that have a medium range that you don't mind taking initial forms of aggro okay and finally um very quickly going to talk about the economy um this is definitely something that is a, a lot of people ask me about and i do want to talk about in a bit more depth i'm going to go through the same sheet that i had in my tips and tricks guide for getting better at the game i got this from jinxed jk i just updated the graphic a little bit to look a bit more presentable no offense to jinxed jk's um, handwriting but this is a very very basic guide and this, i do not recommend that you follow it by the book because it will depend on your game to game as well as which type of galaxy that you're in but i generally tend to aim for this as a rule of thumb and it definitely helped me climb much more consistently 10 gold by round two three 30 gold by the krugs um, if you're on a win streak level to level six and try and maintain 30 gold if you're on a middling try and get to 50 gold by about round three five and then from there you're either going to be looking to slow roll level seven all in fast level eight um, it really depends on what your composition is designed to do but the, the two most important facts or the most important points from this um, graphic that I think really helped me climb was 10 gold by round two three and 30 gold by Krugs that actually helped me more than any other form of economic advice that I can tell you because economy is really important and if you have 30 gold by Krugs you're usually going to be in a position where you can kind of decide where you want to go from there so if you're going to follow two golden rules and you can only remember two things try and get 10 gold by round two three unless you've got an incredibly strong board with lots of two stars and you're going to go on a win streak and then try and get 30 gold by the Krugs because it will definitely really help you cool guys thank you very much i hope you enjoyed it if you enjoyed the content please feel free to like and subscribe it would really help me out um, and i really appreciate all of you cheers